Hey guys, I wanted to talk about building and managing a SaaS, a software as a service. So I've done this a couple of times. Most recently is my Studio Web app, which is my code training platform, which the prototype was developed about seven years ago and uh, based on uh, user feedback, based on client feedback, we developed the application and the platform accordingly. And at this point in time, we're just, we just released a beta of Studio Web 4, which was a rewrite from scratch. So I'm going to give you a few bullet points here about what's it like to develop an app, a long-standing app that's actually commercially viable. And uh, just to give you perspective of what it's like in terms of the development process, and maybe I'll touch on the business process. So the first thing you have to recognize about developing real-world software that people are going to use is that the first time you release it, the first release, the version one, out of the gate is going to be uh, just that, the version one, a version of the software that's going to be updated quite a bit once you have your users start using it. That's why I advocate for a very lightweight framework and a very rapid development of your very of your first version of your software. You don't want to have a overly engineered and architected version one because I can almost guarantee you that it's going to change significantly as you get user feedback. So for example, and controversially, I would not put in um, uh, use test as an example. Use test is basically, um, explain this in layman terms. This is a layer of code, if you will, that you insert in your software that allows you to test functionality so that when you're writing and developing your software, you don't break things that are that have been built already and it may be inadvertently broken, some functionality that you've got working and then you work on something else and it breaks something that you thought was working because the code you wrote here affected the code there, blah, 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 blah. So you put in all this other code that checks, that you run every time you release a piece of software that checks the integrity of everything that you built prior. Uh, this is a high level explanation of that, but there are a lot of things that developers should do, like use, like use test uh, insertion and uh, so automatic reporting and so forth, that I would not put in a version one of the software because the software is going to be changed so much that you're going to be wasting a heck of a lot of time uh, maintaining all these things. Now, later on when the software is mature, then you're going to put in a much more lock solid code because you know what the features have to be. You know what the functionality has to be. You understand the use case of your software much more so. So case in point with Studio Web, Studio Web, Studio Web 1 was developed as a rough and cut beta software. I was rough, 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 rough because again, I wasn't sure what the use case was going to be. So the code was very lightweight and uh, not the most robust code, but it still worked really well, supporting big number of users, even though the code was rough and tumble, as I said. And as we learned more and more about the use case, we kept patching the software. We kept adding components to it. And it got pretty messy because when you have multiple developers and you see your use case shift from this to this, you start having to buy, do a lot of bypasses and it, it becomes messy pretty quickly. It's normal, it's just normal, that's just normal for code. Even Mac OS, at one point, they had to retire Mac OS because it was, it was, it was developed on a need to nerd basis as any real product is. And it got to the point where the software was just the core of it was incompatible with the new use case, largely because when Mac OS was first developed back in the day, computers were in a certain way. And by the time they decided to start work on OS 10, uh, computers were totally different. And the way people use computers were very different. So they needed a whole new operating system and a whole new piece of software to begin with. So uh, when you're first developing your first version, just get it out as quickly as possible so that you can be nimble and you wouldn't have wasted so much time in having this rock solid code. Because you have to understand, when you have 
super rock solid code with all kinds of protections and redundancies put into place. It takes a lot of time to do that. It's very expensive to do that kind of stuff as opposed to putting out something quickly and just getting feedback. Now, over time, when you've really figured out exactly how the software should work and you really understand the use case, then what you can do is you can start looking at ratcheting down that software. Now we started doing that with the original code base with Studio Web 1 and 2 and 3. These three versions of Studio Web were based on the original code base. And um, as things got a little bit messier and messier in the code base, we started using different strategies to extend the lifespan of that code base. I've talked about this before. One of the things we did was we created a separate app and uh, it would feed information to the original app through a microservices uh, design pattern. And uh, I won't get into that, but essentially we created a second app here. It read the data from the original app and then it fed process data to the original app in a way that would be much more difficult to try to do within the context of the original app. And by doing this, we extended the lifespan of the software by about two years, I think. But it comes to a point where you say, okay, it's seven years old now, Studio Web was six years old, and I said, it's now time to pull the trigger and to re-ray from scratch because A, we knew exactly what the software needed to do. We knew exactly what uh, the statistics had to be processed. We knew what the bottlenecks were as a result of uh, the type of data we were tracking and so on and the way the system was being used. So we were able to architect from scratch, from the database up, a brand new system with all this knowledge. So as a result of that, this new Studio Web, Studio Web 4, is got all these, it's much more locked down code with all kinds of automatic reporting and protections in place that the original didn't have. Simply because now we knew, we know the use case, we know what the software has to do exactly. So that core of Studio Web 4, which is locked down uh, with the use, t use case testing, automatic bug tracking, all this kind of stuff, we're able to do this now, and it's warranted now, because I know that that core will not need to be changed for many years because we understand the business model. We understand what the SaaS has to do, SaaS is software as a service. So there you go. I hope this makes sense. This is a high-level look at what it's like to uh, develop in a SaaS. So you start off light and nimble, expect to make tons of changes, uh, and then at some point when you really understand the business case for your software, then you can look at writing from scratch, a clean version that will uh, have all kinds of protections put into place that uh, you hear about so much in modern day development. And I'll leave with uh, a point that I keep trying to bring back to the conversation here is that you hear a lot of things out there about all these tools you gotta use and all these best practices. And a lot of this stuff makes sense in the context of a mature, piece of software where you know the use case and you can lock it down and it makes sense to invest that knowledge. A lot of these practices, a lot of these things that people do don't make sense when you got a, a brand new piece of software, a brand new startup where you just want to iterate very quickly. You want to get the software out the door as quickly as possible and you want to be nimble and be able to uh, make changes according to the needs of your clients, according to what your feedback is. If you have all these big architectures that people propose in your code base from the beginning, it's just going to slow down the whole process tremendously, tremendously. So there you go. From the perspective, somebody who's been writing code for over well, 20 years now. All right. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.